welcome everybody to this session, to this interesting session. I would like to briefly introduce the presenter, Professor Mohanad Korshide. Welcome also, you have just arrived uh, today. Uh, Mohanad Korshide studied Islamic theology in Lebanon and sociology in Vienna, where he also took his PhD in 2008. His dissertation was a very interesting empirical study on the attitudes of Islamic religious education teachers in Austria. For several years, he himself taught Islamic religious education at Austrian schools and was involved in teacher training for Islamic religious education also. Since 2010, he has been professor of Islamic religious education at the University of Münster, which entertains one of the meanwhile five centers of Islamic theology at German universities. Professor Koshidi has published a number of important books, among them in English, Islam is Mercy, Essential Features of a Modern Religion published in 2014, and up to now only in German, but hopefully also coming up in English, uh, God Believes in Humans with Islam Towards a New Humanism. So you will see from these titles um, that he is a very progressive uh, Islamic theologian and um, hopefully contributing uh, to the further development of Islam in Germany. His paper today will be on the topic, Islamic Contributions to the Common Good of Public Education. Dear Mohanad, we're very glad you're here, and the floor is yours. Thank you, Manfred. I uh, already told Manfred I will need uh, 40 minutes, not 30 minutes. Uh, Islamic Contributions uh, to the Common Good of public education. <clears throat> in my talk to the topic, the role of, Islamic, uh, of Islam in public education, I would like to focus in uh, greater detail on some observations regarding the important role of Islamic religion, edu uh, religious education in public schools in Germany. The arrival of Muslims in Germany following the job migration in the 60s and 70s of the past century has changed the face of Germany. In fact, Germany turned soon into more than one way uh, increasingly pluralistic society. This fact beca became uh, particularly visible in the 80s when for the first time uh, due to the law of family reunification uh, uh, from uh, 1981, uh, Muslim school, uh, school girls and boys entered the public schools in Germany. It needs to be remarked that the school girls and school boys were in the beginning not identified as Muslims. In the 80s, these people were labeled as uh, as uh, children of foreign workers, as foreigners, as uh, migrants, even as Germans with migration background. And little later, the same individuals, uh, now adults with or without own families, were still stigmatized as members of the second and third generation of migrants. Only after the uh, terrorist attacks of 9-11, uh, the label Muslim uh, emerges in the public debate. But this label obviously points to the same stigmatized group for formerly no, uh, known as foreign workers and their uh, progeny. This um, marks an important uh, shift, which, uh, shift which almost uh, a noticeable turned foreigners into Muslims. The often typical problems of social integration were now explained by the otherness of newcomers due to religious convictions. Almost all problems regarding the social sphere were explained by means of Islam. Today we hear often arguments as they speak hardly 
or any German at all uh, precisely because they are Muslims or uh, they have difficult to gain higher ranks in uh, the public education system or at work precisely because they are Muslims. Altogether, the category of being Muslim emerges as one of the most important interpretive uh, paradigm uh, for social deficits of the migrant, uh, migrant community, uh, constructing an otherness grounded in religious otherness, which ultimately come into conflict with German standards. It's thus uh, uh, postulated uh, that Islam, a construct uh, that is not further defined, represents the true problem and obstacle uh, uh, to integration. The debates around the topic Islam in recent uh, years um, have either emphatically uh, focused on uh, political security considerations or on diffuse uh, topics as the, build, uh, the building of mosques with minarets or uh, headscarf uh, and so on. Such uh, thematic um, narrowness is obviously loaded with uh, patronizing uh, attitudes toward ethnic and or religious minori uh, minori uh, minorities. Um, taking religious attribu uh, attributions as point of departure for other, uh, othering, while for obvious reasons the other is received with negative connotations. The widespread association of Islam with terror and violence, which only increases the negative aspects of being Muslim in, um, um, in a non-Muslim society. That means the debate about Islamic religious education in German public schools includes the public often um, volatile uh, uh, this uh, uh, discourse about Islam of the German public and isn't uh, restricted to a neutral category of German education in general. It follows logically that the challenges following Islamic religious education is enormous, especially the political representatives understand Islamic religion education as an instrument of successful integration, which intends to uh, demonstrate the Muslim youth. Public rhetorics, uh, to the best of my knowledge, have proven to be um, counterproductive. It often provokes a um, defensive attitude of Muslims, precisely because Muslim believers start experiencing Islamic religious education as a tool of the government by means of ideological uh, indoctrination. Thus, Islamic education is suspected to be no more than political manipulation and less an inner Islamic negotiation of essential factors of a multi-leveled uh, social life. To my claim, it's an urgent uh, necessity that we acknowledge the high important, uh, importance of Islamic religious education articulated from the self-understanding of the Muslim community, an education that also benefits the public education and thus uh, uh, public knowledge. Imperative questions are, for example, what will Islam contribute to public knowledge? And which kind of self-expectation is um, couched in the concept of Islamic religious education? At this point, it's necessary to underline that Islam and Islamic education are not unconnected concepts, concepts self-understandable, but rather subject to constant uh, change, as Muslims need to decide what they might understand by concepts as Islam and Islamic education, nothing less is at stake but the self-definition of Muslims as being Muslims, Muslim lifestyle, by which Muslims themselves give a testimonial what the diffuse concept of Islam can mean. Again, the challenges are enormous. In the following, I will point to three urgent questions, two theological and one pedagogical. The theological challenges refer to the question of the ability of pluralism on the one hand and the uh, willingness, uh, willingness 
to uh, negotiate with reference to a certain life reality on the other. The pedagogical question faces the Muslim youth itself, who are primary addresses um, when it comes to Islamic religious education. The theological reflection, number one, concerning the ability of pluralism within Islam. Allow me to start with a, a hypothesis. Islamic religious education can only emerge by means of constructive negotiation and can only contribute to the public educational system when Islam acknowledges pluralism uh, alongside its own truth claim, meaning a self-understanding of inclusivity and exclusivity at the same time. Only an inclusive, um, uh, inclusive and, uh, understanding of Islam opens the possibility to encounter not Muslims as equal partners on a theological, legal, and moralistic level. It opens the possibility for uh, 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 mutual uh, resp uh, respect and acceptance uh, acceptance facing the other. Religiously um, based exclusivity insists vehemently the, uh, that everything and everybody outside their own religious par uh, parameters uh, is excluded from the salvation imparting knowledge of the uh, transcendent reality or in other words, revelation. Other religious traditions, in this opinion, have no share in salvation. The concept of exclusivity, however, should not be confused with the truth claim of Islam, which can but must know be understood by means of exclusivity. Even if I, cons uh, if I consider my religious to be the path to truth and to win my religion's uh, careers and uh, unquestioned truth claim, I don't necessarily deny the possibility that there might be other ways to truth. Integrating such an idea would not mean that I, I place my own truth claim at uh, disposal. On the contrary, an exclusivist understanding of the truth claim uh, would ultimately also trigger violence because if we w um, if we won't deny, if we, uh, if we, um, uh, uh, because it would deny other religions claim to truth or even their right to exist. According to the Quran self-understanding, such diversity, even confessional diversity, is uh, intended uh, by God. At uh, example, here, uh, chapter 5, uh, verse 48, had God willed, he could have made you uh, one community or can, one confusion. This surah is, by the way, revealed towards uh, the end of the Quranic revelation when Muhammad was at the peak of his political power. According to Quranic self-understanding, God alone is the truth, al-haq, and therefore truth is rendered absolute. But, uh, but at the same time, no human has truth at his or her command. The human cannot have truth at his or her command as he or she cannot have command over God. But the human must be understood as a seeker venturing uh, for truth. One can approach the truth, but one cannot own, uh, own it uh, ultimately. The statement that God alone is truth saves the human from idolatrous um, appropriation and ultimately calls for modesty in remaining a seeker of truth. Again, truth can never uh, be owned in full, but it can be approached little by little. To oppress absolute truth uh, claims uh, contradicts for uh, obvious reasons an inclusive understanding of Islam, which in turn grants the human with freedom. In general, to critically engage in a fruitful uh, interreligious dialogue um, means that all parties must waive exclusivist truth claims. This doesn't mean that a party has to away with its respective truth. On the contrary, the individual truth claim counters the 
path to be ventured by means of truth. The path t uh, turns into one of many highways to approach truth. History proves time and again how uh, Illinois paths of totalitarian truth claims have changed the face of the earth and how they have absued religious traditions, how often an exclusivist understanding of religion and ideology has led to violence. The approach that claims that also other religions besides Islam sharing uh, salvation in uh, parting knowledge and the realization of a divine reality must be understood equal to Islam can be uh, traced back to the thought of Mahmoud Ayyub and his hermeneutical approach in the Quran. Ayyub probably the most important living authority in the field of religiously based pluralism claims that the Quran itself demands religious pluralism. According to him, plurality is a commended by God. He bases his argument on the Quran itself, for example, uh, chapter 2, uh, verse 62, and chapter 5, 69, uh, both promise salvation to Muslims and non-Muslims alike. In eternal salvation, also uh, Jews, uh, uh, Christians, uh, are included. Ayub's claim, however, goes far uh, beyond the reali uh, realities uh, acceptance in Islamic history. He claims that especially the above verses of the Quran challenged Muslim royalty, uh, ju uh, jurists, uh, um, and political uh, theorists and uh, confronted them with the crux interpretum uh, concerning uh, juridical and political matters. And precisely for similar ideological reasons, most interpreters of the Quran neglected the uh, central, uh, uh, central uh, teaching of Islam. Similar of Ayyub's argument, uh, argu uh, arguments, one can call to mind the Pakistani scholar Fazlur Rahman, who, did, uh, who died in uh, 1988. Rahman emphasizes that Muslims' exegete, uh, uh, exegetes um, had um, uh, uh, misinterpreted the Quran concerning the question of pluralism. On Quran 2.62 or 5.69, it goes, um, Lo, Muslims and Jews who are uh, 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 Muslim, uh, uh, excuse me, uh, Muslims and those who are Jews and Christians and uh, Sabians, whoever believe in God and the last day the, um, uh, and do right, uh, surely their rewards is with their Lord, and there shall no fear, uh, no fear come uh, open them, uh, neither shall they grieve. Rahman writes that Muslim uh, commentators had, uh, had um, carelessly disregarded uh, these verse and their theological uh, uh, and their theological implications. These can be uh, summarized as follows. Those members of humanity who believe in God and the last day and uh, do good works will be saved. But Muslim commentators had manipulated the, uh, mis um, uh, and, and misinterpreted the verse, giving a new meaning uh, to it. Jews, Christians, and Sabians have become Muslims uh, beforehand in order to be saved and uh, an interpretation that, according to Rahman, is excluded by logical argument because Muslims would only be one group of those who believe, or the Quran would only speak of the good Jews, uh, good Jews Christians, and uh, uh, Sabians, which had lived long before the rise of Islam. And interpretation that Rahman um, regards as an even more absurd toward the force. For Rahman, the question for, uh, of the relation between Muslims and not Muslims is together with women rights, the most pressing challenge within Islamic thinking in modernity. He thus trees, uh, uh, tries to uh, understand the Quran in a different light, a light which he sees um, from enlightening with all implications. 
it's well known that the Quran talks fr uh, frequently about uh, Jews and uh, uh, Christians uh, and also uh, Sabians. On the ba uh, basis of a number of Quran verses, these groups of believers are accepted by Islamic tradition as the so-called Ahlul Kitab, people of uh, scripture, a term uh, if, uh, eventually uh, broadened, uh, uh, broadened to include also uh, Terrestrians and uh, Hindus, however, without rights of full equality uh, and acceptance. This is also reflected in the legal structures of some Islamic countries today. Where uh, Jewish, Christian, and um, uh, Zoroastrians uh, can freely practice their religion, but are degraded to subjects of second-class members of society. They are excluded from quite a number of rights which are self-understandable for Muslims. The answer of the Quran to exclusivist claims of Jewish and Christians demands, according to Rahman, no interpretation. Guidance is the sole task of God. No community should thus claim that it is elected, guided, and sole subject on God's salvation. In light of such strict negation of exclusivity and election, the Quran claims that good people, uh, good people might be also living among other communities. This is the meaning of Quran 262 or Quran 569. It's part of this logic that all humans are included in humanity sharing good, uh, good uh, deeds, faith in God and the uh, resurrection in turn that would also mean that non-Muslims must engage with Muslims on eye level with full acceptance and acknowledgement. But not enough. Rahman equally answers the daring question. Why so many religious and uh, uh, communities engage in co uh, uh, competing each other uh, with respect to their tense and uh, juridical rulings? The explanation is equally easy, as it can be concluded that all religions and communities compete um, in um, uh, venturing for good, challenging each other and negotiating their tenets with a mutual goal at this point. Uh, he brings to mind chapter uh, 2 from Quran, verse 177. It's an urgent, uh, this, um, ediratum, uh, this ediratum to implement such an Islamic self-understanding within the circles uh, of Islamic theology. And understanding that constantly challenges the uh, hitherto known at Vintrers uh, towards the acknowledgement of religious and confessional diversity. Theological reflection number two, ability of dialogue within Islam and its importance for a mutual life reality. Again, let me start with a hypothesis. Islamic religious education is important to implement the teaching about a dialogical and communicati communicative God uh, which can pave the ground for the life reality of Muslims and not Muslims in the here and now to reflect on it, ultimately taking seriously the theological implications that would follow such an approach. If we ever want to somehow understand or characterize um, the Quranic God, we must assume that he is personal, fully devoted uh, to humanity uh, in love. And this even in the earliest Meccan uh, surahs. And if he must be understood personal, his revelation to humanity must reflect the historical framework of its revelation in one way or the other. The overall thrust, thrust of the Quran, starting from the earliest Meccan uh, sur, uh, surahs until the end of revelation in, uh, in Medina, 
That means, according to the traditional uh, understanding, all text between Surah 96 and uh, to Surah uh, 5 gives absolute evidence of a, God, uh, of a God who cares truly about his creation, knows and is worried about the uh, defective human condition, a God who intervenes in the world affairs by means of revelation, the updating of the potential essence, uh, essence of the Logos, who is doing and saying things, hears prayers, and even allows the human to stimulate his emotional care, showering the human with his mercy, if he turns to him in uh, uh, repent uh, repentance. And that is uh, precisely the merciful God, the God uh, that takes liberty, uh, liberty in allowing womb-like emotions towards his creation. He should be understood as dialogical, communicative God who is very much alive and um, intervenes in history. The emphasis of this personal Quranic image of, his, uh, of God's uh, of God is important for this discussion because only if Islamic theology understands God as a theological God who communicates in time with his people, it will be plausible to understand the Quran as a medium and as, at the same time uh, as a result of communication between God and the community in the seventh uh, century. Consequently, it allows us as Muslim not only to take seriously the Quranic research which understands the Quran as a procedural uh, revelation resulting in a written down manifestation in a process of an uh, actualization uh, over some 23 years. Also, the dialogue uh, with texts from surrounding cultures of late antiquity can be accepted for uh, consideration. For a dialogic and communicative, uh, God takes no monologue. He doesn't let the Quran fall from the sky, but he communicates with the people by means of its linguistic, cultural, but also psychological language and images. This is the Quranic concept of mercy, in particular, the unconditional loving attention of God towards his creation. This would uh, uh, be as Rahman, all merciful. Therefore, humanity as such is chosen from a Rahman, an all merciful creator God, as part of this chooseness. The human should strive to come to terms with the Quranic message in its historically new situation. The Quranic message being revelation understand, understood as innovation within historically conditional. Uh, conditioned social constructions and uh, conditions and at the same time pedagogical instruction to the perfection of the human condition and mind. At this point, I have to bring a self-critical note. When we speak of the merciful God, we speak as told about um, communicative uh, dialogical God who stands on the side of the human and cares for uh, his creation, is pleased for and with them, and takes the uh, consents of the people and um, su uh, su uh, suffers with his suffering, uh, thus showing emotions that could be uh, exemplified by Surah 93, according to Western Quranic studies, uh, one of the earliest, uh, if not first, revelation which depicts God in unconditional love towards the human struggling in most hurried situations. The Islamic tradition has uh, neglected this personal God um, in many of its positions in favor of a less sympathetic um, understanding of uh, God. Uh, the image of a static God who indeed has a free will and is almighty but doesn't have emotions and accordingly is not able or doesn't want to show compassion. This idea of the never changing cruel and uh, jealous um, uh, God uh, cannot be uh, extrapolated from the Quran, but was rather writ uh, into it in, fo in form of 
eisegesis and this especially in the light of certain philosophical assumptions about the nature uh, of uh, God, especially the uh, Islamic reception of Platon and uh, Platon, which we have uh, still, uh, still have till today in the Islamic theology. As we have said, the Quran presents God in a totally different way. From the very beginning, he is a personal God who interacts directly in this world. The emphasis of this acting God in time already in the first Meccan surahs strongly suggests that this is a corrective uh, intervention of the Quran in the idea of the Meccans from a static, rather passive God. It also reflects the change of worldview where suddenly a merciful God emerges who personally cares for the human in the here and now on the one hand and in the hereafter on the other. A God whose nature is merciful and thus uh, facing the people unconditionally from um, uh, eternity is a God who is uh, align, uh, uh, aligned to relations by his nature. Uh, he is near, uh, example two, chapter 286, when my uh, servants ask you about me, say that I am near, I respond to the call of one who calls wherever he co uh, whenever he calls to me. Um, we are closer uh, to him than his uh, jungler uh, Wien. God seeks uh, uh, lovers, uh, the co-lovers, five, chapter 5, uh, verse uh, 54, believers, if any among you renounce the faith, God will replace them by others uh, who uh, are loved by him and who uh, love him. On the base, uh, basis of uh, theological uh, worldview that focuses on the dialogical and communicative God, it will be possible to paint a picture of Islam beyond a pure legal religion, which takes into account the ongoing God-man relationship. Religion is then finally not a mere pool of theological reflections on legal uh, sub uh, 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 subtleties and legal positions, which serve for the uh, sanctification of the divine. Only then it will be possible to free the human from the uh, cuffs of uh, passivity and erect a religion which serves the spiritual, ethical, and individual needs of the human individual. It finally will bring forth the human responsibility towards society. Now the uh, last reflection, the pedagogical reflection young Muslims and religious identity. Especially members of the so-called second and third generation of Muslims migrants in Germany have a strong connection to their present life contexts and uh, societies. They live, in, uh, they live in the abyss, uh, separate, uh, separating them from the homelands of their fathers and forefathers is uh, extensive. The more they feel integrated in the receiving society, the more their expectations grow, which is reflected in the claim of equality in face of all uh, societal uh, institutions, as education, work marked, and um, uh, housing uh, marked, thing, uh, marked uh, etc. Um, and equally strong the claim for acceptance and acknowledgement. The importance of religion is in the second and third generation extremely multifaceted uh, uh, and differentiated. This can be explained by the fact that these genera uh, generations are placed in a greater uh, so, uh, social uh, tension, language and uh, town identities balancing between the original society of their fathers and uh, forefathers and their receiving society. Therefore, they are drawn often towards religion serving as a possible uh, co uh, coping strate uh, strategy. The expectations of the Muslim youth are enormous. Uh, 
in this country where are born and uh, raised, they seek a secure ho home, which would also mean to providing equal chances in education at work possibilities, etc. But at the same time, many of them also seek a spiritual home in which they can freely develop as accepted mem members of society. The more these expectations are not met, especially in forms of discrimination, the more uh, uh, sur uh, surrogate uh, conflicts emerge. Many young Muslims are seeking the actively towards the ongoing discrimination, a more secure we feeling, which gives room for reflecting on religion. This drawing uh, back towards religion, I would call shell identity, shallen identity. For the construction of a firm collective identity, many young Muslims turn towards an empty Islam. The Islam which they live must be uh, compared to a shell. Uh, deepened uh, identification uh, with Islam without a firm based in Islamic theology will ultimately lead towards a deflating religion. This is, this is due to the very fact that the identification with Islam is a surrogate effect. This form of a religion doesn't seek for spiritual, uh, spirituality, uh, doesn't seek for uh, cleaving to the divine, it is not concerned with meaning, but is uh, uh, solely uh, focused on the outward identifying elements in form of uh, facade. Religion, for them, means con con constructing a collective identity, which grants a secure um, uh, territory within the overwhelming, uh, the, uh, the, uh, overwhelming uh, uh, feeling of otherness. Shell Muslims, as I would uh, call them, base their identity of empty and remote elements of identity. Often youngsters have a strong feeling of otherness, uh, representing the unwelcomed and disadvantaged uh, uh, foreigners. It's the concept Islam that grants, uh, grants them uh, stability, that serves as uh, important um, uh, 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 hang between youth with migration background of same origin and uh, religion. Religion finally grants them a feeling of security in a hostile world. It is of views that such identity constructions must be understood as reactive, reactive to the expectations of their families and uh, communities on the one hand, and reactive to the lack of acknowledgement uh, molded in the uh, 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 negligent um, uh, behavior of the majority, uh, majority culture. Especially this point underlines that this form of identity is more an attribution of the other and too much lesser degree a development, uh, development of an autonomous um, identity. Finally, when young Muslims have to um, delineate uh, what uh, describes them as Muslims, they tend to describe what they are not. Their identity is far less governed by positive uh, assertions. The identity shift of second and third generation of migrants, which I tried to describe above, calls to action. High expectations are confronted with, uh, are confronted with a failure to meet these exp uh, expectations. This failure leads to an over uh, emphasis of cultural differences and um, uh, uneasy identity constructions. Difference are emphasized, um, abuses seen uh, unbridgeable. Uh, Shared value are negated uh, and uh, downplayed. A shared religious past is equally neg uh, negated and uh, downplayed. 
The religious concept of pluralism is much less able to attract uh, the youth, even if it is um, f firmly grounded in the Islamic tradition itself. Religious otherness is what they aim after. And it's uh, precisely here where an exclusivist view of the Islamic religious draws, uh, draws them uh, into its uh, gravitation. This all being said, it's an urgent um, desideratum that we reframe so, uh, social um, uh, conditions in order to uh, enable Islam to emerge as a partner in the public debate about education and not only Islamic education. Only on the condition of a reframed society, Muslims can emerge as equal partner in the mutual uh, goal of Europe's uh, 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 destiny, uh, Europe's destiny. That this, uh, uh, that, uh, this is a, a mutual task is self-understandable. Muslims and non-Muslims need to work hand in hand to fulfill that expectation, which cannot only be restricted to public schools or uh, institutions for Islamic education and even Islamic theology. Even the current European uh, debate about refugees and Muslims uh, points to the fact that we are just at the beginning of the often painful process of bringing forth in empathy and sensitivity to the foreign and unknown. Islamic education can serve here as point of departure of, for the development uh, of a better future for Muslims and non-Muslims once the inner Islamic debate about the ability of Islam for pluralism has been successfully implemented in the education system. This debate needs to be carried out with sensibility towards the experience and young Muslims who seek to answer current questions with all sincerity and on the uh, basis of an authentic religious identity. Thank you very much for your attention.